I'm beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Hey, welcome to another episode. If you do enjoy this video, consider giving it a like, as it does help the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. Last week we were totally not Captain Falcon, and this week it's party time. Game number 26, Mario Party. Released in 1999, this game was developed by Hudson Soft and published by Nintendo. Most of y'all know this game already. Get on the board with three of your best buds, move around, play the mini games, buy the stars, then after 20 turns or so, none of you are friends anymore. It's such a great time! And it must be a good time because the series is still going strong with a new Mario Party coming out for the Switch later in 2021. Originally, my goal for this game was to beat the minigame island, but it kind of evolved into unlocking and playing the final secret board, which requires 100 total stars. So that's what we'll be doing to beat this game. So there's sort of some lore in this game. Basically, Mario, Luigi, Peach, Yoshi, Donkey Kong, and Wario all want to become the superstar. Toad decides to oversee their quest to find out who it should actually be. So Toad sends us to his pipe of doom where we all free fall to our death. I mean, uh, we go to our next board game adventure. You can choose the number of players, which will only be one because we're doing single player in this series. Then you choose who you want to be, which I pick Luigi because I like Luigi. Finally, the difficulty of the CPU, the map played on, and the number of turns, which can either be 20, 35, or 50. The game starts with Koopa Troopa choosing the turn order by randomly hitting a dice block from 1 to 10, and it gives everyone 10 coins to start. The main goal in Mario Party is to earn stars. You get this by finding Toad on the board, who can be in many different places on it. Players move on the board by hitting that same dice block and move the corresponding amount of spaces. The first board I chose to play on is the Donkey Kong one, which is probably the simplest one. Really the only special thing here is that the Womps are there and you have to pay 10 coins if they're blocking your path, and there's a boulder that chases you if you land on the happening space. After all four players have finished their turn, a minigame will start. Minigames can either be free for all, 1v3, 2v2. The team games will be split based on who landed on a red or a blue space. If you land on a green happening space, you will randomly be assigned red or blue. There are lots of great minigames in this game, and I was really nostalgic for them coming into this. However, they don't come without their issues. More on that later. Along with the regular spaces on the board, there's a few special ones, like the Bowser space for instance. If you land here, you go visit Bowser and spin his roulette of awful things. You can have great outcomes like giving your coins to Bowser, or playing a Bowser themed minigame where you lose coins if you lose. And if you win, you get nothing. It's a great time. The most interesting one is Bowser Revolution. If you land on this, he'll take everybody's coins and give them out evenly to all four players. It can actually change the game entirely, like if one person has way more coins than everyone else. You might also notice a 100 star present or a 1000 coin present on the roulette. I used to think it was impossible to land on, but apparently there's a very low chance it can happen. Unfortunately, it never did in this entire playthrough, but just know if it does, Bowser doesn't actually give you the present. He just looks around and then runs away. Another feature you might run into is the boo located on each map. Boo is interesting in that it allows you to directly affect the other players by stealing coins or even stars from them. It's a great way to lose all of your friends. Or you might land on the coveted single player minigame space. That's right, in this multiplayer party game you can get a space that gives a minigame all for yourself. The other three have to sit there and watch as you probably collect some easy coins. By far, the most exciting and most game-changing space you can land on, though, is chance time. This is where friendships go to die. I remember getting so mad at these, both as a kid and an adult, when I used to play this in college. In chance time, two players in the game will have some exchange of goods happen. It could be as innocent as giving someone 10 coins or even swapping stars with someone. Like, look how dumb this is. If you really want to test your relationship, play Mario Party with your partner. But yeah, that's the gist of how the game works. One final special thing is when there's only 5 turns left in the match, Koopa Troopa will give a recap of the current standings as well as pick who he thinks will win. Not sure if the prediction he makes matters, but when this does happen, it changes the game a bit. Red and blue spaces give double coins for landing on them, and Koopa Troopa will now give you 20 coins for passing the start instead of 10. 
Finally, after however many turns of board spaces, minigames, and betrayal, it's time to announce the final results and declare the winner. Koopa Troopa gathers everyone together and sees what they've all achieved. The winner is determined by who has the most stars, and if multiple are tied, then it goes by coins. Actually, I'm not sure what would happen if you're tied in both coins and stars, any of y'all know? But, it's not so simple. There's an option when starting a match to have bonus stars included. And I highly recommend turning them on, because it makes things so much better. During this end screen, three additional stars will be rewarded to players for certain things. The minigame star goes to whoever got the most coins from minigames. The coin star goes to whoever had the highest coin count at any point in the game. And the happening star, which goes to whoever landed on the most green happening spaces. Minigame star will typically go to whoever's best at the minigames. The coin star is a bit less predictable, but minigames play a huge part in it. And the happening star, that's just pure random. Like, there's no way to control landing on those happening spaces, so it can really change the outcome. Finally, after all the bonus stars are given out, the winner is declared. Of course, in this first one, I won, because I'm awesome. It like shows some cutscene where something relevant to the board you're on is given, and whoever got last gets wrecked by some hazard on the board. You can view more detailed statistics about the game, which is really cool. And then it puts all your coins and stars into your storage. Unfortunately, it only counts the stars collected by players and not the computers, so getting 100 stars for that final board is going to take ages. But don't worry, we found a fix for that. The next board I played on was Mario's Castle, the only other one-star difficulty one. In this one, you're up in the clouds with a big castle underneath. All the rules and spaces to land on are the same in each board, but the layout and special rules are a bit different in each one. In this one, it's really simple. The only variations are you can go left near the start to visit Boo if you'd like, then you just keep going until you reach the end. Usually Toad appears in different spots on the map, but in this one, he's always in the same place. The twist is that at the end of the board, it'll either have Toad or Bowser, depending on the state of the board. If Toad is there, you can buy a star. If Bowser's there, well, you gotta give him 40 coins for his fake star. Yeah, that's not a very good deal. It swaps between Toad and Bowser when someone reaches the end, or if someone lands on a happening space. The only thing constant with all boards is that chance time is always rigged. Like, come on Donkey Kong, you aren't even involved in this exchange. No, dude! <laughs> what did I ever do? So remember how I said we had a fix for not getting the CPU stars for the 100 count? Yeah, so it turns out you can swap controller assignments during a match. So if you do this on the last turn of the game, you can assign all CPUs to players and their stars will go to your bank. Basically, it makes this process four times as fast. After 50 turns of running in the clouds, Luigi wins once again, and Wario apparently falls to his death. What the heck? Next board I went for was Peach's Birthday Cake. On this one, you, uh, run around a giant cake? This is another one where Toad is always in the same place. The way this one works is when you get about halfway through it, you run into a Goomba who sells a seed. It starts with four seeds and decreases as people buy more. Three of the seeds lead to Toad for a star, and one leads to Bowser to, uh, get wrecked. He sells you a cake that doesn't really help you out at all, and the coolest part of this board is that there's no boo. Instead, it's littered with happening spaces. If you land on one, you can pay 30 coins to lay a piranha plant trap for the other players. If they land on your space, the piranha steals a star for you. It leads to so much chaos at the end of the game, there's just traps all over the place, it's awesome. After 35 turns of mayhem, Luigi wins again, and uh, Yoshi apparently gets eaten by a piranha plant. Rip Yoshi. I think this board's one of the coolest ones just because of the whole piranha plant stealing thing. I really like it. Next board I went for was Wario's Battle Canyon. This one is kinda weird, honestly. There's four separate islands all the spaces are on, and when you get between islands, it's launching yourself out of a cannon ran by bob -ombs. Apparently there's a giant war going on with them here. Basically, you get in the cannon, then it rapidly switches spaces on the island, and you choose where to land. It's basically random, because you can't time it or anything. The other unique thing here is there's a shy guy who you can pay to take you to a fifth island where Bowser is. You only ever want to come here in the rare event that Toad goes there. Bowser lets you pay him to, uh, use his 
special cannon. This one sends you to a random island, and I guess it could be advantageous in some weird scenario, but most likely just don't go there. And the happening spaces, they change the direction the cannons shoot you. Oh yeah, in case you were wondering, chance time, it's still absolutely rigged. I hate Mario Party! <laughs> like, so rigged. After 50 turns of launching around in the most rigged match ever, Luigi did not win after 50 turns of play. But that's okay, I did win on this board later on in the playthrough. Also, Peach gets yeeted into the abyss by Bowser, apparently. Next up was Yoshi's Tropical Island. This one has two giant islands you can travel between, with Toad always being on a static spot on one of the two islands. You can switch which island he's on by landing on the happening space. Bowser will always be in the other spot. The way you travel between the two islands is by paying a toll to a thwomp blocking the bridge. It starts at one coin and then it gets permanently higher each time it's paid. You can pay the minimum price and raise it to a higher price if you'd like. My strat here was to just pay the max 50 coins, then none of the other people could make it to the other island. That way I had the boot all to myself. <laughs> Honestly, seems like an oversight by the devs, cause this one's just so unfun if you do it that way. After 35 turns of me being all myself with Boo, Luigi won in a landslide. And apparently Wario gets eaten by a giant fish. Rip Wario. The final standard map is Luigi's Engine Room. Finally, home turf for me. This one's really just a standard giant board, but with a lot of branching paths. After each turn, there's red and blue doors that swap from being open and closed, which adds even more complexity. Then there's also a machine you can run into that will swap the doors mid-turn for 20 coins, but honestly there's no reason to pay this other than maybe a very specific situation near the end of the game or something. Seems like it should cost way less. There are actually two different types of happening spaces here. One swaps the doors as you might expect, but the other sends a pulse of hot steam into your butt to launch you to a new area. I like the idea of multiple happening types a lot, it's pretty cool. Bowser's here too. He's created an ingenious device that can create coins from nothing. He will give you one coin and only charges 20 coins for his services. Also, since I know you're so curious, yep, chance of time is still rigged. <laughs> No, 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 okay, now I am worried, it is still so rigged, after a miraculous comeback, Luigi wins yet again with no room to spare, the engine is repaired and Bowser's like torturing Donkey Kong with that steam, what the heck? So along with the six standard boards, there's two additional ones you can play, and they're honestly the best too. The first is Bowser's Magma Mountain. This appears in the shop for 980 coins after you've won on all the standard boards. This one's a giant linear path to the top of a mountain, but with a few twists. There's a few spots where you can pay 10 coins to attempt a shortcut, in which you have a 50-50 chance at success. The happening space here causes a volcano which turns all blue spaces on the board red. Hope you like losing coins. When you reach the top of the mountain, you get a 50-50 chance to either go to Bowser or Boo, and trust me, you do not want to meet Bowser here. He gives you a 50-50 chance to either steal 20 coins or steal a star. Like, that's brutal, a star. That's really, really rough to deal with. This map's really cool because there's just so many opportunities for lead changes and you never know who's going to win. After 50 turns of chaos, none of us knew who would win. It all came down to who landed on the most happening spaces. Okay. This is it. Yes! Let's go! Get wrecked outers. Get destroyed. You colluded with DK and it didn't matter. That's right, your boy Luigi wins again. The final map in our journey is Eternal Star, which we get from earning 100 stars during gameplay. Normally Koopa Troopa facilitates our game, but this time Bowser knocks him off into the abyss and Baby Bowser runs the game instead. This is not good, folks. This board's honestly awesome, and it shows real potential in how complex these could get. There's a bunch of warps that send you to different places on the map, and they're connected by different wires. Landing on the happening space changes how the wires are routed, so it can get confusing. 
Also, normally Toad gives us the stars, but this time there's seven copies of Baby Bowser who are scattered throughout the map with the stars. In order to get them, you have to win a dice roll against them. Fortunately, it's rigged in our favor because we can only roll 8 through 10 while Baby Bowser can roll 1 through 10. Finally, Bowser sits in the middle of the map and trust me, you do not want to run into him. Uh-oh. I didn't want to go here. Made it all this way, I praise you for my soul. You really are one lucky chap. Lucky because what? He's guaranteed to steal your star, which it's just awful. It feels miserable. The match was coming down to the wire. <laughs> and it was neck and neck, and it was impossible to tell who would win. Actually, that was a lie. I literally had like 16 stars. It was an absolute blowout. Luigi wins again. And it like shows a cutscene with the board reforming into a giant star, and then the stars form the overworld, and the credits roll. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it, my journey. Wait, you really thought I was just gonna not talk about any of the mini games like that? Of course we're gonna talk about them, they're half of the game. So this game offers a mode called Mini Game Island, which it's a single player mode where you just have to play through and beat every mini game there is. It's kind of neat with an overworld progression and lives to keep you going. I kind of miss this in the newer Mario Party games, honestly. Like, I like the Mini Game Island. It was actually my original goal for beating this game, but uh, it ended up changing, as you know. Anyway, it's a pretty neat mode, and I'd recommend doing it if you play this game. But instead of walking through this, I just want to talk about the minigames in general. So in Mario Party, there's four different types of minigames. Four player free for all, one versus three, two versus two, and single player. The four player games, they're great for the most part. These are essentially free for all games, every player for themselves. Sure, there's some that are pretty forgettable, like Musical Mushroom, or maybe Buried Treasure, which is completely rigged by the way, or that really dumb game, Hot Bob Omb, like, Come on, it's super rigged. For the most part though, these free-for-all games, they're really fun, like even the bad ones. Then you know, there's top tier ones like Crazy Cutter or Castaways, where you just make bank or Shy Guy Says, which puts your attention and reflexes to the test. Or maybe like Bumper Balls, where you just get to ram your friends over and over again. Or Bombs Away, where you try to survive a barrage of cannonballs flying towards this tiny island. The best minigame in all of Mario Party, in my opinion, is Mushroom Mix-Up. Like, this one is so fun. I think this is the perfect type of minigame which heavily uses the player's skill, but also has randomness thrown in and increasing speed to keep up the pressure. Literally, just steal this game and throw it into Fall Guys. It would be amazing. Mario Party 1 also has an interesting type of four-player game that I don't think any of the other Mario Parties have, and that's co-op games. Basically, all four players are working together for a collective goal. Take Running of the Bulb, for instance. One player holds a light bulb while the others fight off the attacking boos. Everyone needs to work together. Or Keep Away, where you work together to open a vault with all the coins in it. Also, what the heck are these enemies supposed to be? I'm pretty sure there aren't any games like this in the future Mario Party titles, and I don't know, they're just fun. Anyway, the four player games are enjoyable for the most part, but then there's other types of games that can't take that same property. So there's the two vs two games. They're not too bad honestly, but there's literally only five of them. Desert Dash, it's okay, it gets pretty competitive if you have four real players. Bobsled Run is a great race, lots of fun. Then you've got Handcar Havoc, which is just a button mashing nightmare. Or Deep Sea Divers, which isn't even that different from the four player game just like it. The most unique one's definitely Bomb Skip Ball, but it's way too short. Maybe have it be like best of three or something. Then there's the one versus three mini games, and these are just, they're so unbalanced. Like take Bash and Cash, for example. Whoever is the one is in a giant Bowser suit, and the other players just get to beat them up and steal their money. Like, what did I do to deserve this? Or Piranha Pursuit, where it's literally impossible for the three on the cloud to catch the one on the skateboard unless the one makes a mistake. Like, you may as well just go AFK if you're on the cloud. And don't get me started on Coin Shower Flower. The one gets to just sit there and make bank while the others fight for any scraps that probably won't exist. Please sir, may I just have a mere morsel of a coin, I beg you. The one you all probably remember most is Tug of War. A fine game in theory. Spin the joystick rapidly to pull the rope. If you played this game though, you all know that it's a disaster. 
I still have battle scars on my palm from trying to win that game. Did you know there was actually a lawsuit won against Nintendo for hurting children's hands? Uh, I think they had to like give out gloves to people or something, it's kind of funny. Also, I learned it's not a very good idea to play this one with a camera pointed at you because, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Whew, okay. Finally, there's the single player mini games. These probably just shouldn't exist, or maybe they could be reworked into four player games. The idea of Mario Party is it's a multiplayer game, but this goes entirely against that. One person is playing the game while the other three just sit and watch. That's not to say the mini games themselves are bad, just that they should be reworked. Limbo Dance is pretty cool, Teetering Towers is a fun platforming challenge, but just have everybody playing those and maybe racing them or something. There's one final kind of special minigame in this, and that's the bumper ball mazes. You unlock these by completing Minigame Island. They're kind of fun, you know, it feels a lot like a primitive version of Super Monkey Ball. I honestly don't remember playing these as a kid, so maybe I never finished the Minigame Island? I don't know. Whew! So, there you have it, my journey to beating Mario Party. There's a lot of stuff to cover here, but hey, I spent over 20 hours playing it. Ultimately, this is a great game that kicked off a legendary franchise for Nintendo, and without this, we wouldn't have all the other great titles that followed. Mario Party 1's still a very fun game, and it's even better playing with your friends, like just having all the chaos and unfairness and alliances being formed with friends, it's a great time. I'd recommend playing it in the current day, easily. Playing it in single player is honestly pretty fun too, although it's definitely a lesser experience. You might want to check out the minigame island if you play by yourself. The main game's definitely not as good with CPUs than it is with real people. The boards, they're all great, and they're also very unfair, but I think the rigged aspect of them gives them a certain charm, you know? Like, it's just, it's fun to just screw somebody over for no reason. The minigames on average, they're really good, but there's definitely issues which I didn't consider until I replayed this game. I gave it a 9 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 4 out of 10 for difficulty. But yeah, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you did enjoy the video, consider giving it a like, as it does help the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. But yeah, thanks for watching, and here's a sneak peek at what is coming next. So we have 359 games on the list, and that doesn't add up to 394 minus 26. There's a few that aren't on here, like Mario 64, I'm saving for last, as well as one. You'll see, but it's basically all of them. But let's see what we're going to get. 353. No! <laughs> we're playing. We're playing WWF Attitude. So, uh. <laughs> more wrestling already.